undercover Israeli Jews disguised as Muslims thwart Al-Aqsa prayer ban. I did that. I disguised as a Muslim and I went there for atheist day. This is why I had the picture. Okay, hold on. Okay, you keep reading that while I go get the picture. Okay. Go on. Raphael Morris, a self-proclaimed Zionist Israeli activist and his group, quote, uh, called Retur Returning to the Mount, frequently dress up as Muslims to circumvent the prayer ban in the Al-Aqsa Mosque, referred to as the Temple Mount by Jews in Jerusalem. There, quote, there are tens of thousands of Muslims who pass through these gates every day. Our target is to blend in and not get taught, Morris told Al Jazeera. He and his group wear costumes and even take classes to learn some Arabic words to help them blend in with the crowd and avoid the Israeli guards that are supposed to prevent them from their religious practice at the site. The group believes that they are paving the way for, quote, full Jew Jewish sovereignty over the Temple Mount and building a Jewish temple over the Dome of the Rock. Since the Arab-Israeli War in 1948, the administration of the mosque and its compound continued to remain under the custodianship of Jordan. The Jewish fundamentalists oppose the custodianship, as the location of the mosque is considered the holiest site in Judaism. In an interview with Al Jazeera, Morris disclosed that his group had been infiltrating an Al-Aqsa mosque daily. The Al-Aqsa Mosque is not just a religious contention. It is also a central flashpoint for strife and violence in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. According to Morris, the area where the mosque is located belongs to the Jewish people because it was promised by God in the Bible. Uh, Hanadi Halawani, a Palestinian activist, claims that Morris's acts are aggression and, quote, terrorizes Muslims praising in the mosque. Terrorize how? Oh my God, everything terrorizes you. Um, okay, so this was, this is very interesting, okay? Because basically what we have right now in Israel is Israeli guards, okay? Jewish Israeli guards or secular, I don't know what. Um, stopping people who are not Muslims from entering this area, right? So you have to be a Muslim. And there's a specific hour that tourists can go but most of the time, only Muslims can go, okay? Which are, those are the best well, time. Because... And during that specific hour, you are not allowed to do any religious practice. Yes, and you're not allowed to go inside, okay? But I, as, I'm not just not a Muslim. I'm beyond not a Muslim. I'm an ex-Muslim, okay? And I stepped inside there at the hours that was supposed to be just for Muslims, okay? And I went inside the dome of the rock like i did the unholiest things i made the entire thing najis okay i touched the rocks i like you know i made it unholy okay <laughs> my on un my unholiness had spread around the entire thing okay and to be able to go in there so i had different screening process processes on different days because i think i went there two or three times right on the same vacation okay uh, the first time i had this blonde Israeli, I don't know, police or soldier with a giant gun, okay, making me, an ex-Muslim, recite the Fatah, recite a Quranic surah to prove to her that I'm a Muslim, okay? So you have, like, somebody who's not a Muslim, and is, I never thought to my um, that in my entire life I would have to recite the Quran to an Israeli soldier to prove to her that I'm allowed to go in there, okay? And I don't even know if she knew, like, what I'm reciting, would I, like, how did she know if I'm, if this is correct or not, right? Anyways, she allowed me in, and I went and I spread my unholiness everywhere. The second Spreading time, corruption in the land, literally. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I spread corruption in the holiest, one of the holiest of lands, right? The second time I went there, I went there for Atheist Day, which was Atheist Day a couple of years ago, so I could take pictures with the Atheist Day logo at the three holiest sites, including the Islamic one, because it is easy to get to the other parts, right? I mean, uh, the Jewish wall, the Wailing Wall, um, you they're picky about what you do as, there as well. Like, you can't go there unless you put the kippah on, right? But they let you in, even if you're not a Jew, they let you there, but you have to put the kippah on. But if also when it's like uh, Sabbath, you have to turn off your camera because cameras have electricity and electricity is like lighting fire. And on Sabbath, you shouldn't do anything, any work, including lighting, having fire and your cameras because they're running electricity. You should turn it off. We, we had a woman shouting at me 
uh, the Jewish part because I we had cameras rolling, uh, and she was like this, like you know, she was so angry. Anyways, but at least they let you there, okay? Uh, the Christian part, they have no restrictions. Anybody can go. I went to the whole Church of Holy Sepulchre, and that was amazing. Okay, so no restrictions, no rules. Anybody could go. The Islamic one, you have to be a Muslim. Okay, so the first time I went there, uh, I was I had to pass only one screening process by a holy by holy by a um, Israeli soldier. The second time I went through um, multiple screening processes. Like every like I got past the soldier, they made me recite the surah, and then I met past another person. He made me do a few things as well. And then when I got to the the grounds, I had this Islamic guy, all of a real Muslim, all of a sudden, like, hold up. You don't seem very Islamic with your outfit, okay? You have to, and then he he went, he, his screening criteria, criteria was a lot higher. He wasn't just like, recite the Quran. He was like, uh, recite the Quran. Um, and then it was like, give me the five pillars of Islam. I gave him the five pillars of Islam. He told me, give me another surah. And I gave him, Allah had, Allah samad. Like, like, okay, okay. He, like, he was still not buying it. And then he was like, where are he you could from? smell the Shia on you. No, Shias are loud. I'm he could, sh no, Shias are loud. He could smell me. Like, he, you know, like, there's something off about this guy. I can't be a Muslim, right? And then the last thing I did, which made me, which made, which made him like, like, he wasn't, he was about to like investigate more, right? He was not letting me in. And then I pulled out the last trick. I took out my Canadian passport, okay? And I showed him because my Canadian passport had the birth city, okay? And it's, on my Canadian passport, it says the city of birth, Tehran, okay? So it showed that I was born in an Islamic country. For some reason, that was, that was it right i was and then he let me in i was so tempted so tempted to tell him who are you to judge me for being a muslim and i have you no shame sir have you no shame only allah can decide whether i'm a muslim or not are we harajites <laughs> now <laughs> like are you tech fearing me sir are you tech fearing me like who, who how dare you try to decide what's in my mind do you have knowledge of Qayb? do you have knowledge of the unseen are you claiming to be god sir do you claim to be putting taking the position what the happened of god? To Allah, Allah. <laughs> <laughs> right like so i was <laughs> i was i was gonna I, I was so tempted to go that route but like i didn't argue anyways i took here's the picture let me have shave the picture that i managed Yay! to get right, right? Show so, and tell. i don't yeah, so this is the picture. So I took three pictures with the uh, Atheist Day Circle, one right next to the Church of Holy Sepulchre, another for the Christian one, one for the, the Wailing Wall for the Jewish one. And this one, when I went undercover as a Muslim, I took one picture outside. I took a picture inside right next to the rock, uh, right, right, the Dome of the Rock. That's why it's called the Dome of the Rock. It's just it's supposed to be the rock where Abraham almost killed his own son and sacrificed his own son for God. But also, according to Islam, also, it's the rock where Barak, the, the, the half horse, half woman mount that Muhammad went to heaven on, stepped on that rock and then uh, went to heaven, right? So it's the same. The Muslim uh, space Pegasus. The, yes, the Muslim space Pegasus, like lift. That's the sign of liftoff. That's the place. That's the liftoff ground, okay? So I went and I touched the rock and everything. And they, they even say that, that you could see the step of, there's a, there's a place where Muhammad had touched his hand apparently before lifting off. There's a place where Barak was before lifting off. They identify all of this. There's a place where Zahra apparently, you know, I don't know, there's a place for Ali, there's a place for Zahra, there's a place for everybody. Okay, there's a mosque specifically dedicated to Barak right in the corner over there, right? Mm -hmm. Anyways, I took a picture, it's hard. I have a picture with the atheist sign right next to this rock as well, but it was not as glorious as this picture. So yeah, I had to, <laughs> I did this for you guys. I went the undercover and did this for you. But this news, I don't like this news because this now they're going to be on guard, right? This guy is making it difficult because this guy is putting the full costume and the beard and his memory. I don't know. I'm probably memorizing some Arabic in the Quran. So I'm assuming next time I go to Jerusalem, I don't know. As, how is he going to like, but he doesn't have what I have. He doesn't have a passport that says you were born in Tehran. So maybe I will still 
be able to go. I mean, how can they decide who's a, who's a Muslim? How, what if somebody was an Israeli Jew and now he converted to Islam? Are they not going to let them in? Like, how, who are they to decide? I don't understand. It. It's really complicated. So this news fascinated me because it brought up so many interesting questions. Like, I so a lot of, especially the um, Jewish fundamentalists, or people, other people who are more sympathetic towards them, see it as a religious freedom issue. And in many ways, I think it is a re religious freedom issue. Um, I think it's, in isolation, very strange to be so strict on discriminating against people on the basis of their background, about who can be in a space. Now, the thing is, when I was doing research, that I found out is that Armin, you were talking about how strict it is and how they're not allowed to do it. It's going to be harder. Well, actually, there's been a lot of reports about how over the last few years, there has been, it's basically an open secret. It's ba barely even an open secret about how often Jews are going in to explicitly and open, overtly do Jewish prayer in Al-Aqsa. And this is becoming a huge source of tension and how the Israeli guards are letting them overtly do religious practice in these spaces, which is illegal and criminal. Um, so, and Al-Aqsa is such a sensitive place. I mean, the last, you know, military offensive on Gaza last year was partially sparked by Israeli guards storming into Al-Aqsa during Ramadan, I think. Um, and then, and then, you know, Hamas started up on their BS and response and it just, you know, really blew up. So I don't know. I think it's, it's something that's very interesting and difficult for me to think about as someone who's, you know, entirely removed from this issue and this conflict, because, you know, to me, it just seems like so weird to, you know, deny people the right to just go into a space, you know, observe their religious practice there like it, it it's it's a freedom of movement issue it's a freedom of assembly issue it's a religious freedom issue but obviously because i am removed from it i don't understand the full context of how this is a very tense security issue and it's, it's not, a public safety issue no no, and, no 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 it's also a declaration of taking back a religious space like it's not exactly. just security this is bad bringing back the messiah and all that like end of days kind of stuff as well you know what i mean like um it's a, it's a whole it's a it's not just security warfare this is like spiritual warfare like they, you know they, like this is i mean this is the temple this is where the jewish people think like this is our holiest ground so guys the wailing wall is not the holiest place for the jews the place where they have the dome of the rock that is their holiest spot I mean, like that's ours right so like they want to be able to pray there this is a spirit, like a major like battle the battle between gods kind of situation happening right now no, but Armin, you misunderstand me. I, I fully understand that this is spiritual warfare, but because it is viewed as spiritual warfare, it also becomes a f physical security concern. And I don't know, what are your thoughts about this contention between religious freedom and freedom, freedom of movement and the explicit discrimination that's taking place? Oh, yeah, of course. It, that, it, I mean, this, it has but, to be weighed is... versus the very real and historic issues that leads to people's death like what do you think about that contention and that balance the, the problem is that um, the force that is the, the sensitivity of this issue is this one of the in jerusalem is one of the strongest in the entire world so the forces of secularism um i mean as much as as sec, israel is secular more secular less secular than us and canada for example or europe but more secular than most of its neighbors. But the secularism that Israel has is right in Jerusalem is not going to be able to be, to be able to compete with the forces of these religions right now, especially how sensitive these things are. Right. Um, by the way, Dean is saying that mosque looks like a what salt shaker. That's not a mosque, <laughs> by the way. The mosque is the the Alexa mosque is to the corner of this. At the the, the mosque is actually huge. The mosque is on the other side. I've been there. It's like, it's huge, okay? Like, it's underground and everything, right? Uh, this itself, the Dome of the Rock, it's not a mosque. 
Yeah, it was very interesting because there's also these Palestinian like volunteer organizations who are probably the same people that stopped you to interrogate you. They're volunteers who monitor to make sure that Jews aren't getting inside. And it was very interesting. I was reading a lot about this. The language that is used on both sides is so inflammatory. Like the Palestinian activists were calling them settlers, intruders. They're, you know, they're terrorizing us. And then on the other side, you know, the, the Jewish fundamentalists are like, yeah, like this is explicitly for us to take back this land and build the third temple, which mandates the demolition of Al-Aqsa. Like, yes. and, they, and the they even have, supporter. they even have like architects that like stay nearby in the same neighborhood where they've already oh. made the floor plan for the third so, temple. Like there, so then it's, I, yeah, there are the, if you go to Jerusalem, there are stores that like, you know, I saw like people sh selling paintings and pictures of the, of this entire scene as it is. And if you look at the paintings is missing the dome of the rock. Oh my God. Like if they already removed that in their pictures and the face, and that's what you could buy, right? But yeah, guys, like the goal is for them to eventually destroy this dome that you're looking at, right? By the way, this um and and rebuild the temple, okay? And a lot of evangelicals in the United States are very much support that because they think that's what is needed for Jesus to come back. So every time there's higher tensions around Jerusalem, they love it because they think it's make is potentially will involve bringing yeah. Jesus. Oxymoron back. is saying a very similar thing happened in the Ram temp Ram Temple, and Hindutva was literally revived from death, meaning as a political force. So it's better to be careful. That's I thought this was very <clears throat> interesting. I realized that in some ways, in many ways, this is comparable to the contention over the Barbary Barbary Mosque or. Um, uh, how, I can never pronounce it right. I, I owed yes. It's just this, you know, it was a mosque. It was destroyed in the nineties by Hindu nationalists. And because it's supposed to be where Ram was born, Lord Rama was born. And the, this contention over the site and who is allowed to have claim over the site is still a major cause for violence and contention amongst Hindus and Muslims in India to this day. Mm -hmm. Bread of life is, as you're saying, not all of us, though. Yes, not all Christians. I was saying some, many evangelical Christians. Not, yeah, not all. Um, also, by the way, this Dome of the Rock uh, was made by uh, Umayyad uh, Islamic caliphs um, as uh, it was like a lot of people think like, like, look at this and think that this looks like a church. It looks like a Islamic, um, looks like Islamic. But this is actually very Christian. It was, hold on, let me bring up back the picture that I had. Oh, I forgot. I think I Ooh, time it. for a history lesson. No, no, just really quick history lesson. This this mm -hmm. dome is was meant to rep compete with the with the Church of Holy Sepulchre. It mm -hmm. was it was modeled after a church. Basically, it was it was a branding like it, it was uh, it's built right next like very close to the church of holy sepulcher and it was meant to be bigger grander and also higher right so jerusalem was the land the holiest land and islam was being created at this time and this was the jerusalem was the city where you branded your religion and did the pr for your religion mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. this dome was supposed to do uh, was to represent this new religion that is Islam as superior to the other religions. So it's it's made to look very much like the whole Church of Holy Sepulchre, but bigger, higher, and more with more glamour and you know design. So it's very it's very actually the design is actually very Christian. <laughs> what? <laughs> Asian American is saying my sky boob is bigger than your sky boob. <laughs> I can't stand you people. <laughs> true, true. That's basically oh what the my message God. is. No, it's very interesting um, what you said about how this is ancient religious marketing. Like we need to get our brand yeah. here. Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. Thank you for the yeah. history lesson, Norman. I could go into much more detail, but I won't right now. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait, that reminds me. Guys, if you want to see more of Armin's, you know, the coffers experience in Israel, 
go to the Ideas Unboxed channel and you can see a lot of videos of Armit interviewing people, Israeli atheists, interviewing more um, religious Jews, interviewing um, uh, Palestinian atheists. I That's still have videos that I didn't release yet. I went into mosque. I prayed with Sunni Muslims. They showed me how to do the vizu. I recorded all of it. <laughs> and they, walking one... around Israel with um, genetically modified skeptic. Ooh, um, running around. So go the... check it out on the YouTube channel called Ideas Unboxed. Gossam is, you know, re reminiscing about those videos saying those Armin and Israel streams were so good. Very informing and fruitful. So mm, go check out you. that content, guys, on Ideas. Very interesting. Yeah. Um, Ruben is saying pretty wild how much religious history is tied up in one spot there. Yes. Yes. And this is just a funny comment from D saying, Infiltrator, Mossad, take notice. Actually, do take notice. See, like, I am, I have experience, okay? Hire me, Mossad. I'm not joking. Like, I think everybody, I think everybody is convinced that I'm joking about this. I am really not joking. I am up for hire. Mossad, contact me. Um, okay. We should, oh, wait, hold on. You both are saying something. <laughs> so he's talking about you know this site it's, it's like brothers when they're kids if one is playing with that toy that's when the other one wants it as well <laughs> no that's <laughs> mine atheist republic needs your help we've been the target of many legal attacks by hindu nationalists ever since our founder armin Abhabi blasphemed against hindu deities we have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in india we have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues, including judicial harassment and censorship. Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below.